Welcome to our special series, I Care, I Volunteer on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Alima Hotaki, and today we'll be talking about the benefits of volunteering, as well as the importance of recognizing those that help others. Joining me now are Karen Strong, the Executive Director, and Sharon Clark Kufis, the Marketing Communications and Membership Manager of Volunteer NBC. Welcome to the show. So can you tell us a little bit about Volunteer MBC? What is the organization about? Okay. Well, we're the local volunteer center. We're serving the cities of Mississauga and Brampton and the town of Callaghan. Our core service is a referral matching service for volunteer placement within the community. Uh, we also work with over 180 community service organizations to help them find volunteers for their organizations. And we also help them with some training as well to assist them with the volunteer engagement process at their organizations. And what are some of the main, the core services that your organization provides? So I think um, our referral service, the online one, and uh, where people uh, from any age can go online and find opportunities uh, based on their interests and skill sets and that uh, they feel like they can make a contribution. But also um, we have... Uh, an in-house referral team um, at all three of our locations. We have locations in Brampton, Mississauga, and Caledon, um, where they can come in if they don't feel comfortable going online and looking for a volunteer opportunity. They can definitely come to our offices and uh, the referral specialists will help them to sort of, you know, um, based on their skill sets or based on their interests, we'll find them an opportunity at one of our 185 plus member organizations uh, across the region of Peel oh, wow. that have <laughs> volunteer opportunities that match that interest. And what do you find is so different from volunteer um, MBC, for example, compared to other? Why, for example, let's say I'm interested in getting involved in volunteering or I have a daughter or a friend. Why should they come to volunteer MBC instead of, for example, just contact the organization directly mm -hmm. and say, hey, I'd like to volunteer for you? So I think uh, we're basically the one-stop shop. Um, so anybody that is looking to volunteer can come to us and we can direct them to the organization. So we're basically taking away that search component of not really knowing whether um, they would be a good fit with one organization uh, or another. We can do that for them. And um, that's why it, it makes so much sense to just have to, everybody is very constrained when it comes to time. And um, being able to just look at one location where they can find their ideal volunteer opportunity. And sometimes, you know, it's not the very first time that it is the ideal opportunity, but that's the beauty, you know, there, there's 185 organizations that, that we work with um, from everything, right from sports organizations to social service organizations. Um, so there really is something for everybody and for all ages as well. Well, I noticed that when I, read, when I visited your website that you almost have something that caters to every group out there. So you have something for newcomers, you have something directed at teenagers, as, at youth, even post-secondary students. And does that often make it easier for when somebody comes in and you know they're a newcomer? How do you kind of guide them through the process? Yeah. Well, definitely newcomers is the larger population that we serve, as well as youth, um, because of the community that we live in. So it, really, we, we try to work with our member agencies as well to help them even develop different volunteer roles that either newcomers or youth can be involved in. Um, seniors is another uh, population that we're really uh, trying to match with volunteer opportunities. They have incredible skills, some expertise that are just unbelievable that member agencies really can tap into. So, you know, really that referral system is what we do best and, and really helped the individuals find the right match, but also our community service agencies, helping them to get the right people they need to deliver their programs and services. And what are, for example, some of the benefits, like for a newcomer, somebody who's new to the country, how do they, for example, benefit from volunteering? Um, that might be obviously a lot different from somebody who, who's a senior who's almost probably retired, doesn't have to worry about finances. How do their experiences, for example, differ? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for, for newcomers especially, volunteering is really an excellent roadmap for them to, uh, to, to create that Canadian experience on their resumes because that's absolutely key. They, 
they are met with closed doors so often when they go into um, you know looking for, for job opportunities also I think um, for individuals even even youth uh, when they are newcomers it's a great way to network and uh, through volunteering and to create those uh, social circles in, in their new home basically and uh, to get familiar with uh, with customs and often we even get newcomers where volunteering is not really something that's formalized in their country of origin but when they come here you know they find out it's far more uh, structured and and there are um, various services available and really when they meet um, for those individuals I really encourage them to, to come and see us uh, so that we can find a good match for them because I think one of the uh, with newcomers especially you know we, we often get this you know I you mentioned financing is is uh, me being able to put bread yeah. on the table for their families is huge yeah. um, so we always say you know don't give up on your dream you may have to take a job that doesn't necessarily you know it focus on the area um, that you have your skill sets and your education in but that's where you can use volunteering yeah. that's where the volunteering component comes in because there are many many organizations across the region of Peel in fact 50% of the organizations in Peel are based on volunteering on volunteers and if it wasn't for the volunteers helping them they would have to close their doors so for for newcomers or any volunteer to be able to realize the importance that they play the roles that they play um, is is absolutely significant and, and huge uh, for the community at the end of the day and um, in terms of you've probably worked with a lot of newcomers how what is the success rate like does it often lead to a job or, um, when you volunteer for most of the ones that you've worked with in your experience do they come back and say hey thanks for <laughs> I think it's the networking, right? And yeah. the networking is absolutely huge. So, um, you know, maybe it's not even directly going to lead to employment, um, but it's being able to create those networks and to expand um, their connections. That's what's going to lead to job opportunities. Yeah. And I guess um, economic benefits aside from, you know, where uh, volunteering might lead you. What about in terms of, I understand, like recognition? There's a lot of times where people help out in the community and they just, you know, they go unnoticed. And people sometimes, you want to have that gratitude. Uh, why? And I know recently you, um, your group, your organization is setting up a nomination program. Can you tell us a little bit about that and why recognition is so important? Yeah, for sure. Well, we do have our, our volunteer recognition awards program and it gives the opportunity for community service agencies to nominate exemplary volunteers in their organizations. We have nine different categories based on leadership, based on maybe perhaps a board of director who's doing exemplary things in their role. Um, newcomers definitely is a category. Um, youth um, is a huge component, so leaders of tomorrow. Um, so for youth in high school, post-secondary college and university. Um, so we really feel, and we, that's one of our advocacy, is really to recognize volunteers and their efforts. Um, because really, as Kareen mentioned, without some of the volunteers who are helping out with these organizations, they would have to close their doors. They, yeah. they roll solely, run solely on volunteers. Um, so our nomination process launches in January of every year. And we typically will go through the nomination process for a few months. And then the uh, recipients are done, uh, are reviewed by a judging uh, committee. And then the, uh, the awards are recognized during National Volunteer Week that typically happens in April. Um, so we, we encourage community agencies mm -hmm. to put in their nominations. So for those people right now who know somebody out there who mm -hmm. they, they, they would like to nominate, can you just tell us what the website is of your organization and how they could get involved in that? Yeah, so they would right. go to our website, which is www.volunteermbc.org, and the nomination process is all online and uh, they'll be able to do the online forums there. And if you're, with a, if you're a volunteer and you're with an agency and you really want to be recognized for your efforts, let the organization know to contact us and, and we'll, get, we'll work okay. with them. Well, thank you so much for all that information. We have to go to break now, but we'll be back with more.
Welcome back to I Care, I Volunteer on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Ali Mohotaki, and joining me now are three representatives from VON Canada Peel. We have Heather McArthur, Care and Service Manager, Ravina Lopez, the Volunteer Visiting Coordinator, and Paula Peart, who is a volunteer. Welcome to the show, and I hope I said your name right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, can you tell me a little bit about your organization? Sure. VON is actually one of Canada's largest non-for-profit charitable organization, and we actually address community and community health and social needs. So we have home care and we also have community support services. And our community support services are where we strongly rely on volunteers to help us with our service delivery. And um, you match volunteers with um, seniors in the community. Is that often an easy job, getting somebody who is, let's say, in grade 7 or 8, trying, like, because of the age difference, or are people very um, easily convinced to help out with, this, with seniors? Well, we typically look for volunteers who are 18 or over, older, I should say, um, because we know that that's a better fit with our, our senior population. Younger children with seniors, it's great, but um, the, the audience we're looking for is more of an adult to be matched with a senior so that if a senior needs to go out for a walk, you know, they have somebody that can be a companion, go for a walk with them, can do some errands, maybe go to the store and do some grocery shopping, or just provide some social um, conversation and companionship to somebody who's isolated and spends the majority of their day alone. And that's actually a very interesting is uh, issue, even in society today, like in modern societies, where um, I don't know if neglect is the proper term, but seniors are often very lonely. They're very isolated. So in that respect, how mu what do they say about your organization when they actually have somebody there to help them out? They love it. They're actually very grateful for our volunteers. They, the volunteers provide a warmth and compassion that just a general person can't provide because a volunteer is willing to give back to the community. You know, that's something that they want. They have an overwhelming sense of giving back to their community. And it's not as though we're, they're being paid. It's not a paid position. You know, it's their free time. And, and they've made the, those choices to go to the community and help out others. So clients love the volunteers that they're matched with because, you know, they, f they appreciate the fact that the volunteer is taking time away from their busy lives to spend time with them. And for example, the two of you, how did you get involved in volunteering and specifically why did you choose to help out seniors? Okay, so um, for myself, I, um, at, the, at where I was working, there was um, I was taking inbound calls at a, a contact center, and uh, the elderly people that I spoke to always seemed to want to spend a little more time on the phone. And so I thought, you know what? I think that they really have uh, there's a need here, and uh, that's why I sought out the VON to try and help with seniors. And has it been a worthwhile experience for you, like life changing? Absolutely. I've been now volunteering for over seven years, and. Um, I love the feeling of giving back to um, my uh, my client and um, and just the, to see a smile. Sometimes it's few and far between, but to see her smile and or tell me that she really likes something that I've done for her, uh, I really it, it really hits me, you know, really in the heart. I can just imagine. And what type of um, roles does your volunteer organization offer for somebody who is interested in getting involved? Uh, currently in our organization we have several different opportunities. In the Peel region we typically have volunteer visiting where again it's that companionship, it's that, that visit at home with that senior, that one-on-one -on -one time. We also have a congregate dining program where we rely on, on volunteers to assist us with new, uh, offering a nutritious meal to a senior in a social environment. And also we have the, se the SMART program which is seniors maintaining active roles together and a uh, volunteer will go and do a one-on-one -on -one session with a client in their home to encourage and motivate them to do their exercise program to prevent falls. And um, for example, what benefits do you gain from volunteering? Well, our volunteers, like Heather and our volunteer had mentioned, um, not only is it giving back to the community, but 
the fulfillment of helping that client and knowing that you're giving your time and it's not a paid position, they're, you know, truly, their heart is in it. Um, for the volunteers themselves, we try to provide um, educational sessions. They learn communication skills and um, skills if they're acquiring new jobs. Um, you know, they get the networking through meeting other volunteers. So, you know, there's there's many ven benefits where that came from. So. And usually, um, is it easy or like difficult to try to um, get young people to get involved um, with seniors? Is that something for you or? Um, it's not necessarily, uh, I mean, I don't know how to answer that. Sorry. It's, it's not too difficult if they're, if, you know, we find the right, um, I should say, areas to find volunteers, like VMBC, for example. They've been a great source for us um, because there's a lot of volunteers that come through there and they're looking for opportunities. So we've had that, you know, membership with VMBC so that they can help us with recruiting volunteers. It can be a challenge at times, especially, you know, um, I would say this time of year it's more, of, it's more of a challenge to recruit volunteers because everybody's caught up, you know, with their day-to-day -day, um, activities and also with the holiday season approaching. It is a little bit challenging. The new year, New Year's resolutions, we see more of an influx, but you know, we really need to have more of a focus throughout the year to um, retain and also recruit volunteers because it is a challenge. And um, they give so much to our society, and if more people knew what they could do to, the, to volunteer, I think it would be helpful. And I think this is an interesting part because like, we live, everybody's always too busy. Um, people just don't have time. So, for example, going back to you, how do you make time? Because there's a lot of people out there who just say, I work, I have family, I have to make appointments. How do you juggle? Like, how do you manage to put volunteering into your schedule? It's making, as I would anything else, a priority for my, myself and for my life. So, same way someone might schedule in the gym, I schedule in my volunteering because it is giving back as much to my client, it's giving back to me as well. So um, that's a, that, that in itself, and, and, and I'll give the example of going or starting um, a New Year's resolution. You start off and maybe you didn't feel like exercising, but the minute you start doing it, you start feeling better about yourself. And then that's what continues to you to, to make it a part of your life. So, so it's kind of like a high, like people who go jogging or so, they get like <laughs> this natural high. And there's like a natural high of an act, doing an act of kindness. So what sort of advice do you have for youngsters out there in terms of um, who would like to get involved but are still unsure and not too sure if they actually can commit? What sort of advice do you have in terms of like organizing their time management? Do you, should they plan? plan it out better? I say, um, and, uh, and I'll also defer to Heather, for, for myself, uh, what I would say for uh, someone who's thinking about volunteering is commit to a date. Say that that's going to be the date and at, and at least call. Once you call, someone will be there to tell you what the next steps are. And once you do, if, if you find that it isn't the right position for you, then I'd say still find out what do you like to do in the community because once you do start giving back, it really does make a difference. And can you let us, uh, or viewers, know how they could possibly get involved with the organization? If you could let, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, volunteering with us, we're very flexible so that we'll uh, make sure that it's okay for the volunteer. It works into their busy life as well. There's a lot of flexibility with our volunteer visiting program because they really traditionally arrange that time that they're going to meet with the client themselves. Um, to get a, to, to volunteer with VON, you can certainly go to www.von.ca or you can give us a call at 905-821-3254 and we'd be happy to help. Okay, well thank you so much for coming on the show and we have to go to a break but we'll be back with more.
Welcome back to I Care, I Volunteer on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Alima Hotaki, and joining me now are Karen Strong, who is the Executive Director at Volunteer NBC, and also joining me is Lily Ostos, Youth Engagement Coordinator at the Ontario Volunteer Centre Network. Welcome, Kareen, and welcome, Thank Lily. You. Thank you. Um, so let's start off with, um, can you tell us a little bit about the Volunteer <coughs> Centres <coughs> and their role in our community? Sure. So there are 24 volunteer centres across Ontario. Um, we happen to be the volunteer centre that serves the region of Peel. Um, we all belong to a network that's called the OVCN, the Ontario Volunteer Centre Network, and we pretty much provide very similar services across uh, the, the uh, across Ontario. Um, I think you know for some of the more remote areas, um, their services can include information centres. Some of the volunteer centres are connected to United Ways, um, but pretty much we all offer very similar services in that um, the key is the referral service and the matching service to uh, member organizations. And how can people connect to these centers the easiest way? I think maybe Lily you can answer that but going to the website is probably the easiest. Yep yeah, so um, you can go to the website. Some volunteer centers actually offer um, an in-person consultation as well. So if you want to walk in uh, to a volunteer center to get more information, um, they can actually sit down with you and kind of go through the process with you to find out what it is you're looking for exactly. Um, but primarily, I think it is online that you can uh, connect. And when you sit down with a potential volunteer, um, can you just like guide us through that process how does that work does somebody say I'm interested in this or you look at their mm -hmm. skills and then you try to place them somewhere how do you often match uh, the individual with a specific organization so I think it very much um, if, if people have gone through a job interview it's very very similar um, so really it's about uh, bringing your resume potentially or the skill sets that you have to offer uh, putting those on the table and just um, you know discussing what it is that you would be interested in doing and when I say you know they bring their their resumes I, I should really clarify that because for some people that want to volunteer the last thing they want to do is to volunteer in an area where, that they do every day. Uh, they want something completely different. Oh. Just because, you know, I'm, I, I'll, I'll always remember when we first started the Volunteer Center, we had a lady that came in and um, she was a scientist and wanted to volunteer and was not happy with her work. Uh, when really all she ever wanted to be was a ballerina dancer oh. and so we thought you know <laughs> what can we do for her so we ended up matching her to um, an opportunity with a, um, a school uh, a dance school that was looking after um, children that didn't necessarily have the uh, the means to to be in those programs and she was guiding them and was extremely extremely happy with her experience oh, wow. so it sometimes it's just completely different than what <coughs> you uh, would do on a day-to-day -day basis just because you you want something different you want to have a chance to explore passions that you would never otherwise be able to explore and how do you often I know we live in a society where everything has a value we place a value on every Thing. And the concept of working or doing work, giving your time, your effort to something for free. How do you often convince, especially younger generations, of like how do you convince them to volunteer? Mm -hmm. I think for for young people, especially, um, we really try and emphasize the a couple of things. Um, one is the skills that you gain. Um, so obviously when you graduate high school, you move into post-secondary. After post-secondary, you're trying to get a job. Volunteering actually gives you skills that are transferable that you can then um, put forward and use in, in potential jobs that you may be interested in the future. Um, you meet people. Um, so obviously youth love to be with their friends. You meet new friends. Um, so just that social element as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I just think for their future, the, the benefit that it offers um, in terms of skills and um, just networking, I think is very valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So overall, if you'd have to say, for example, like the three benefits of volunteering, what would they be if you can just think like the three main ones? I think um, for, for me, one of the, the one that stands out with all targets, whether they're young or old, 
is the health benefits that you gain from mm -hmm. volunteering. Uh, there's a lot of research that has been yes. done in that area. Yeah. And, um, you know, it basically, I, I, I say this all the time, but you do good, you feel good. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, people, we have a lot of people that come to us that have had issues with mental illness um, that use volunteering as a stepping stone to get back into the working world. Um, it's a more gentle approach, and um, you're with nonprofit organizations that have that caring component. Um, so it's it's a it's a really good approach. But but even for um, you know for students and for elderly people, um, social isolation is is huge. And the volunteering, you know, it gives you back yourself. Um, your confidence and your self-esteem and um, all that really, really helps towards, um, even for seniors, for seniors it's often about, you know, even being physically active through volunteering, um, you know, it, uh, the, there are, uh, the mortality rate is much, much lower among seniors that volunteer on a, um, on a regular basis, so the, that's a key one. Um, I think um, another one is definitely for youth, the possibilities for their future to mm -hmm. build, to you know, find <coughs> out what they really want to do with the rest of their lives. Um, and uh, Sorry, how do you often get somebody who's young? Because I know um, nowadays when you're graduating high school, you often need, it's mandatory, it's compulsory yep, for you to get hours. the 40 hours. Mm -hmm. Is that even volunteering then? Because you're doing it in order to graduate. So how do you often, if somebody has volunteer, how do you keep them? How do you make sure that they stay after the 40 mm -hmm. hours are done? I think I can speak to that. Um, I think really trying to get something that they're actually interested in, that they're mm -hmm. actually passionate about, that they're not just doing something because they feel like they have to do it, but going beyond the 40 hours and, um, I mean, and that's the role volunteer centers play is, you know, we, we're connected to so many different community organizations that do so many different things. And when you're young, you have the opportunity to explore those things. So you start with your 40 hours, but then, you know, you've, you've opened a door to, um, learning and really discovering things about yourself um, and then you know potentially continuing to volunteer after that so yeah and once again let's in case our audience is interested can you throw out the website again as how to get involved with your organizations okay it's um, www.volunteermbc stands for mississauga brampton caledon dot org okay and there you have it and um, thank you for having uh, for joining and giving us all that information and I hope our viewers can benefit from all this information greatly so it's a pleasure to have you here and um, on behalf of I guess everyone here um, thank you for watching um, Rogers TV I care I volunteer and we'll see you next time